uh, my new book is out with Filthy Loot. It's a novella called The Vine That Ate the Starlet and the links will be down in the description and I'm going to read a couple of pages from it to you now. Dolly examined her ankles for stray seeds and man-eating plants. All the billboards and movie ads said check, check and check again. She knocked on the door of the Upper West Side brownstone and handed her fur-lined velvet cloak to the butler. She glanced at her black bob and silver headband before sweeping into the Art Deco parlour. Crooners oozed from the gramophone. Expensive perfumes assaulted Dolly's nostrils and the guests eyed each other like duelists at dawn. Ladies. Dolly, they simpered. Wonderful to see you. Doesn't she look like Cleopatra? Oh no, the Queen of Sheba. They shared tales of Long Island holidays and luxurious hotels, watching and waiting for a moment to attack. I think you told us this story already. Westbury Gardens is so downhill this time of year. Mitzi burst into the room, orange blossom in hand. Marvellous to see you. Lila will fetch you a drink. She leaned in close, as though to kiss Dolly's cheek. Listen, dear. Don't worry, Dolly whispered. Give me the scoop on Helena, and I won't breathe a word. Mitzi's exhale was almost sexual. When she pulled away, years had seemingly vanished from her face. Ha ha, she brayed. You do tell the funniest stories. Dolly stifled a grin. I'll help you with the hors d'oeuvres. Laid out on the kitchen table were trays of highballs and martinis, oysters Rockefeller and finger sandwiches. The maids flew into a panic, stealing themselves for any yelling. Mitzi held up a hand to reassure them, and they resumed their tasks. Mitzi whispered breathlessly, Helena and that stockbroker met at a party last Wednesday. Dolly straightened her silver dress. Everyone knows that. But what they don't know is they had afternoon tea at the plaza yesterday and no one remembers them leaving. How do you know this? I can't reveal my sources. Mitzi crumbled under Dolly's glare. Bunny, that porter I... No. He told me. Keep him out of it, please. I won't breathe a word. Not that Henry would care. He's too preoccupied with what's her name. He's a busy man, Mitzi bristled. He has to keep his clients happy. He certainly does. Mitzi grunted and stalked from the room. Dolly chuckled and popped an egg and cress sandwich into her mouth. She sauntered into the hallway, in no hurry to join the others, and paused, distracted by a blonde figure hovering by the bathroom. A pale young flapper in a white dress from two seasons ago, she glanced repeatedly at the parlour door, at the wall, then the door again, chewing her nails all the while. Her hair was neatly styled, but clearly by her own hand. She looked like a pencil drawing that had been rubbed out. Everything all right? asked Dolly, hoping she was about to witness a faux pas or an angry outburst. It wouldn't make her popular with this set, but it could get her in the papers. I'm fine, she smiled prettily, all boring social pleasantry. Prepare to be forgotten, thought Dolly, turning back to the crackling music and poisonous laughter when a sniff stopped her. Something was about to happen after all. Right, well, that's all you're getting. <laughs> um, I'll put the links down below and if you want to read more, then please do. OK, and the link to the anthology that's uh, for charity for the Mermaids uh, Charity for Gender Diverse and Trans Youth and Their Families will also be linked down below. So thanks very much. Bye.